Hi everyone, and uh, thank you for joining me today uh, for another Facebook Live feed, uh, the Noble Sage Tea Time TV. Give me a second, I just want to check it's recording properly. Yeah, it is. Um, uh, it's been a really good day today because today uh, I've been able to help an artist uh, with a sale, which is really good, which will help their craft to carry on. And so that's been a really great day for me. And also I had my second trip out to socially distance hang out with someone, um, which was really fun. Uh, a good friend of mine, Ben, who we met up in a park uh, a good distance away from each other and it was really, really nice after a long time. The second time in nearly three months, actually, so it's been really, really fun. I hope you're having a good day and enjoying this glorious weather. I wanted to pick something bright and cheerful uh, to show you today, um, and I picked this work. This work is by an artist called Alfonso Dos, um, let me let you have a look at it. Alfonso Dos, who is an ex-principal of the Madras College of Art, and he does these fabulous paintings um, where he has a very unique style. Um, I was thinking about what order to tell you about the style of this work. Um, I think I should. Uh, I think I should first talk about um, the key thing that inspired his his way of working. So. Alfonso Dos early on f was looking at um, jewels, in, uh, jewels and gems, and seeing the way that light refracts through a gem or a jewel, how it uh, gets light goes in and breaks it up into different segments, different kind of um, areas of colour, uh, changing the colour, but certainly creating kind of almost plateaus of colour within the gem, and he found that fascinating. And, uh, and wanted to kind of find us an approach or a style for his painting um, that reflected that interest or that focus um, or that, that kind of fascination in gems and jewels. And so he landed upon um, this technique which used the light of the canvas as the, um, as almost the, the kind of the, the mirroring of the light hitting a gem. So the light of the canvas can be seen coming through. So for example there, and for example, where else, on the, on the parrot there, and in certain other areas, and, and there, um, you can see the light of the canvas coming through. And that's not white paint, that's the actual canvas coming through, which is different. So he's not applying paint, um, he's just letting the background canvas shine through, if you like. So using the translucence of the, of the canvas to shine through this way, so he applies colour, as you can see, in, in kind of flat areas, like almost as, like an Indian Cezanne of sorts. Um, in flat areas like that, the colour has been placed on top of that brightness of the canvas. And uh, he allows the colour to break up, so there's not a lot of colours being used. It's, the palette is very constrained, it's like, for the most part, blues, a little bit of green, um, and, and, and nothing much more, maybe a little bit of red here and there's highlights. But it's more about the application of paint, so he's applying the, um, the oil, in this case, um, very watered down uh, oil, or, or, with, or uh, watered down so that it is um, letting the canvas shine through to give it almost a stained glass window kind of effect. Hopefully you can see that. Um, content wise, that's the next thing that I, is worth talking about is that this links with his interest in religions, world religions. Um, and he will draw from uh, Hinduism, he will draw from, uh, from Christianity, he will draw from Buddhism and in his works, and he will uh, quite freely draw from different religions uh, globally. Partly because a big theme of his work is that all religions are the same light, the same. I, I always think of uh, something I heard at a Baha'i um, a Baha'i devotional, which is that the uh, all these different religions are uh, light from the same sun. So kind of how light, how religions have different viewpoints but are essentially, or different practices, but essentially the same light, the same belief system, the same 
um, good central core that gets dispersed into these different forms. And so that in a similar way, he, bring, he brings different religions into his work. And he sometimes finds very interesting uh, ways of doing that. For example, this work is called The Message. And it's, if you think about that title, The Message, it's simply, in, as you can see here, a woman, close up of this woman, like just a head uh, with her arm up, listening to a parrot that has landed on her hand and who is obviously bringing her this message. Now, he deliberately doesn't align it with Hinduism, even though the, probably the best connection of this is, uh, is uh, uh, the message bringing, uh, 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 the messenger, Hanuman, bringing the, uh, the message to Sita that Rama is on his way to save him. Uh, to save her in the uh, Ramayana, in the famous epic, the Ramayana in Hinduism. So that's a, like a huge, important uh, message being brought to a female character. Here, Hanuman is pictured as, um, it's not exactly Hanuman, but the message is being brought by a parrot. Uh, it's being brought down to a beautiful woman who is looking up to receive that message. And it's very localised to India because you've got these kind of almost tribal uh, outfit uh, decoration and, and adornment that is on her ear and across on her body, just in the, the upper shoulders. So it's a message in a Hindu form, but also it links with other messages that we might think of. For example, off the top of my head, uh, the, the message of the Annunciation, where uh, the Virgin is, uh, is told by the angel Gabriel that she is going to be um, the uh, she's going to be the mother of of Christ, um, and that she's going to have a son. So a message is given there in a similar way from the heavens to a parrot coming down and landing on her wrist. Hanuman, I think, if I remember right, is in a tree, and I think drops a ring into Sita's arm into her hand, and that's how she knows that um, help is coming, help is on its way. So. He draws different religions together in his work, in this work in a really clever way, through the idea of the message, the, the messenger and the message receiver and the message itself. He, he opens it up to, um, to all religions being a part of his one work, similar to the way that light, remember what I said about um, light coming in through a gem and breaking up into all these different shards um, into a gem or a jewel, the way it, it just um, is emblazoned in, within a jewel. Um, similarly, he takes that into his work and in, it informs his work. Um, I love it. I, I love this piece. I love. I just think it frames up incredibly well. And, um, and yeah, I love the moon there, stylized. And I like the way that he applies lines to, you know, it's really outlines, simple outlines. And um, the side profile uh, of, the, of the figure really relates also to uh, Hindu temple painting, which is generally sees figures side on rather than straight on. They're always at a side. And the stylization also um, tends to move us towards uh, Hindu temple painting. It's a gorgeous work. Um, Alfonso is a, is a lovely man as well, a beautiful man. And I met him in... Um, in Chennai on my first trip and then I bought, I can't remember how many works, maybe 10 or 11 works have gone through my hands. These are, this is one of two works with me now. And um, yeah, I'm extremely fond of it. I wanna stop talking for a second and let you have a look at it. Um, and I'm gonna bring the camera closer so you can get a little bit more of a close up. Enjoy.
I hope you enjoyed this edition of TNS Tea Time TV. Please join us on Monday for another one at five o'clock where I'll look at another work from the Noble Sage Art Collection. Thank you for watching.